Hi, I am talking to uh, Julie, who is my product owner, who works for a large multinational bank. And she is the product owner for payments and has uh, multiple stakeholders in terms of not just core banking, but also, uh, you know, global treasury management mortgage and other more uh, complex uh, trading operations. But mostly she is trying to figure out how to um, you know, optimize payment processing. So Julie, you know that we're under pressure to make payment processing more effective, improve the customer experience as well as make it more secure and improve the order to cash uh, process. So if you take a look at our traditional uh, payment processing methods, we have multiple uh, partners that deal with us that have their own systems, they have their own ledgers, their own cash management uh, processes, and all of those have to receive and, and uh, settle cash. So if you think about it, you know, partner one has to receive a transaction, they put it in their ledger, they cash settle it, they get it on to the next step, who also puts it into their uh, payment processing system, they cash settle it, and then it moves it on. And quite frankly, this is not completely efficient. Um, there are opportunities for not just time lags, but also, uh, you know, fraud along the ways and mistakes to be made. And because there's multiple systems and multiple steps and many people involved, you know, it, it takes quite a bit of time as well as, you know, as if we're doing cross-border and cross-country uh, settlement, then regulations get involved and it just takes an inordinate amount of time. So, you know, the reality of, of the situation is that it takes a long time for those cash settlements to clear. Um, and again, they can be very error prone um, and it takes a lot of staff to validate those transactions. Now, um, I want to make you aware of a possibility that we could use something called blockchain. Now, blockchain is not a new technology. Uh, it's been you know, in validation for quite a long time. You know, granted at first it was associated with cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, but uh, as that has moved on, um, you know, now it's more of a uh, stabilized technology with major platform providers investing in it. And we can talk more about that here in a minute. But essentially, if you think about it this way, instead of the traditional way of everybody's got their own financial systems that they all have to post to transact, integrate with another um, you know, financial system with another partner. This is one single ledger um, that you know somebody gets done with a transaction and that piece of information goes back up into that ledger, i.e. a block. And then as it moves along its process, it could be a mortgage, it could be a lease, it could be even an investment transaction that creates a chain, but everybody has complete visibility of that information. And that single ledger um, eliminates the need for many settlement opportunities because we're all settling against the same ledger. And plus, because there's international standards that have gotten involved and particularly with um, certified digital identity, um, the opportunity for fraud is, is very much greatly eliminated if not completely, nobody can ever, ever guarantee completely, but you know, it, it com completely eliminates the risk of every kind of disparate system uh, having to deal with fraud. And you know, at the end of the end of the day, you know, these transactions complete near real time. And so there are multiple vendors, platform vendors, big guys, who have figured out how to do this in real time and particularly on cross-border. So if you take a look at the sample technology providers, IBM actually has, a, has created an integrated network called IBM Blockchain Worldwide, which provides real-time settlement. Um, and that includes cross-border payments that comply with global and local regulations. And then also there's a huge open source community. One of more note is Hyperledger by the Linux Foundation. And so there's a, a great deal of velocity around development of new capability around blockchain. And if you take a look at the large cloud providers being Amazon, Google, and Microsoft Azure, they all have out of the box um, cloud platforms that are available that support blockchain. Now there's 
adoption that is within industry of very large players in the payment industries. You know, Lloyd's has done it for international trading. JP Morgan Chase has done has established a center of excellence for blockchain transactions. And quite frankly, one of our largest competitors for payments internationally is Alipay out of China. And they have established uh, implementation of blockchain payment technologies um, in APAC as well as LATAM and across Europe and is growing. So in order to do next steps, I, what I would say is that we should at least, you know, take a run at it and get into understanding our key audiences and what their journeys are uh, and the capabilities that would benefit from blockchain as well as establish some, you know, foundational KPIs and OKRs uh, that we could test against. And we could partner, we're big enough where we could partner with a couple of the key platform providers, whether it's Google or Amazon or IBM, um, and prototype and, and test and learn against, uh, you know, some against the journeys so that we can understand what things we would want to pilot um, and develop an MVP that could then be broken down to include the backlog definition. Um, you know, some high-level technical blueprints and, and forward-looking architectures um, and perform the pilot and at the same time, you know, establish the planning to do rollout and get to global scale. So I, I think that this is a technology that has matured, that um, the capabilities are well-defined. We have an opportunity with out-of-the-box partners and we have some case studies in industry we can learn from. So I hope we can move forward with this. Take care.